Welcome to Family Business World. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. We have another wonderful show in store for you. I want to welcome Harold Heritage. Harold, how are you? I'm well, Dr. Caldwell. It, it's an honor to have you uh, on our show uh, today. Uh, Harold is the president of Heritage's Dairy Stores, Inc., and we're going to learn a lot about them. And so, so Harold, I always like to start out with, well, tell me a little bit about your background. Where'd you grow up and uh, so on? And then I want to hear about the, the history of the, of the family business. Sure. So I, I grew up here in southern New Jersey in a little town called Clarksboro. Mm -hmm. um, we're right off of the 295 corridor across the river from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Went to the local schools there, uh, Kingsway Regional High School, which is right off of 322. Nice. And then uh, after, after high school, I went to Rutgers in Camden uh, for my uh, undergraduate degree. And I, I graduated from their business school with a... Um, I guess it's a Bachelor of Science in Business Management. So I, I had a good experience there. And uh, after after college, I uh, held uh, several different jobs. I worked down at uh, the Millville, um, down in Millville, Silverton Marina. They built boats with my uncle for a summer, which oh. was really enlightening. Oh, I, nice. I yeah. thoroughly enjoyed that job. I yeah. worked at the local YMCA in Woodbury for several years. Um, this is all concurrent with my uh college education by the way right, okay and then uh while i was in college i started working in our dairy stores here in uh gloucester county oh nice nice the uh yeah. and, and so did you did you when you were a kid when you were young did you start sweeping the floors did you did you kind of clean things up or uh it, yeah actually um i remember being in little league right i played uh, bait. i played youth sports were huge uh for my my upbringing and i just thoroughly remember them and enjoyed them and I'd asked my dad, I wanted a TPX baseball bat. And uh, so he said, son, have your mother drop you off at, uh, at, at the office here in West Effort, and, and we'll get you that baseball bat. Well, he had, he had given me a job in our service department picking weeds and, and sweeping up. And, uh, <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> by the end of the summer, I was able to get my baseball bat. The, the, so, so let's talk about the business model. I mean, this is really an amazing business that you have. Um, you know, obviously, you know, are your competitors the Wawa's and the Quick Checks? Are they, are they competitors or are they in a different category? So I would say, yes, they are main competitors. We are definitely in the convenience store business in our, in our model. Um, but what's been interesting is over time, uh, Wawa looked a lot like we did um, going back 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. But they, they chose to go in a direction of the quick service restaurant mm -hmm. with the gas offering. And over time, they chose a path and, and morphed into who they are today. And they're highly successful up and down the East Coast. Um, but, but what it did for us was provide a, a differentiation by default that Heritages could continue to be who we are, primarily in the full service deli realm. Um, community store and uh, I think that that has worked to our benefit so while competitors it, it's played to our advantage I think uh, we I think we compete with multiple business segments uh, you know in any given area that, that we operate in whether it's uh, your local grocery store or it's your local your corner CVS as uh, the product offerings are seem to go into a, a CVS they have a wide variety of, of groceries they put coolers in there your grocery stores they also have full service deli um counters so i i think we're able to grab a, a, a little bit of business and from all different places well i mean i as i sit here as an outside and you know i consult to a lot of businesses i'm saying you've got a great name heritage heritage is like a, a, a one i mean you couldn't have a better name and i'm i'm a i'm almost evangelical about entrepreneurship being the answer to so many of the world's problems from poverty to even climate change to other things and so when I see these family businesses like yours that are successful at doing what they're doing, you want to maintain that local flavor. But Heritage, you know, that, what a great name. Are you looking to expand? I live in New Brunswick. I, I want one of your stores in my area. So, uh, I do. So, uh, you know, interestingly enough, we also self-distribute a lot of our products. We have a second company uh, called Heritage's Wholesale, which is right around the corner from our corporate office. Okay. Um, so we, we kind of stay local and... I, I am looking to expand to answer your question more directly. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe the opportunity uh, down here in South Jersey uh, is full. That that while it's you see tons of Wawa's, you see tons of uh, other competitive businesses. I, I still think uh, our general 
service area has a lot more opportunity for us as it as it continues to grow up and down both the 295 and the 55 corridor here in in south jersey so, so let's talk about central jersey i'd love to help you um you know expand up to to, to central jersey and I'm, I'm serious about that and and you know one of the one of the challenges is and i and i talk and when i, when I teach and we talk a lot about big you know really big is bad and what happens is there's a certain size that companies become I, when I was at Princeton, actually Jeff Bezos was at, at Princeton, and Amazon has just become the behemoth. But when they get big, they, they lose that customer focus. And so I know, you, as I'm hearing you talk, you're looking at, at how do I grow while maintaining that local neighborhood flavor. Is that kind of what you're, what you're thinking about? Yeah, it is. Like, we would never want to change our identity. Uh, it's funny because I don't think of us as a large company. I, I think of us as a small company, even though we employ close to 500 people. Mm -hmm. Um, but the way we are set up it, uh, with the district supervisor operationally, uh, we have firm control of what goes on out in our stores and implement standards, procedures. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of room for growth before we would even have to worry uh, about such a problem. And so now, now how, you said you have about 500 employees and, and uh um, how many of, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about your family members. What roles are different family members playing in the business? Yeah, so my sister Kate, she's, uh, she's our marketing director. Mm -hmm. My brother Sam is a district supervisor where he has, he's responsible for nine stores or so. My brother Matt is a store manager. And, uh, you know, every, everybody's worked their way through the business. Everybody's worked as a, a, a team member. We call a team member. They're a clerk position, an entry-level job out in the stores. And, you know, go through management and then and then on through. So that's uh, everybody's done the work. And, and so now, how do you maintain? Because we, you know, I talk to a lot of businesses where the, you know, there's family conflict, and some have been able to escape that family conflict. You know, how 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 is that going with your business? And how do you how do you make sure everybody gets along? I think it's about just cultivating your relationships with your family members and and just knowing where the other person comes from and and you know just identifying what their needs are what their desires their aspirations and then being truthful about those as well i think whether it's an, just a non-family member looking for opportunity or a family member looking for opportunity i i know that we have opportunity here in our company and i just think that being honest about their current performance what skills they need to develop and uh, what, what the real outlook is. And I guess setting expectations mm -hmm. yeah. is very important for uh, keeping the family members healthy, whole, and uh, together. Well, and that's, that's wonderful. And, and so, so um, you know, what, what keeps you up at night? What, is, what are some of the biggest challenges that you have as the president of this, of this really successful family business? Of late, the, the labor market has been extremely difficult. It, re it really started back in March, and um, business has been good, but, but we have, I would say, we have 140 entry-level job openings that we would love to fill, and we haven't been able to provide the service that we desire to you know, serve our guests with, so that the hiring piece has definitely been on the top of my mind, and it, it's, it's been very stressful operationally. Um, to staff our stores to the levels that would be adequate for what our standards are. So that's that's my primary uh, thing that keeps me up at night. The uh, I really have been worried about the uh, the vaccine mandate on employers mm -hmm. with over a hundred people. Mm -hmm. um, I we I've been following it closely. I haven't heard any word from from OSHA and what the rules will will look like. Um, but I look at our labor shortage as is now. And it, it worries me to the utmost extent mm -hmm. that uh, implementing such a policy would be very harmful uh, right. to our family business. Yeah. The, uh, we're going to take a break right now. And uh, when we come back, I want to talk about the worker shortage because that's really plaguing uh, you know, a lot of businesses around the country. So we'll be back right after uh, uh, a couple, uh, couple commercials.
So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to Family Business World. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and we're going to continue our conversation with, uh, with Harold, uh, Harold Heritage, the uh, president of Heritage's Daily Store, uh, Dairy Stores, um, and really just a fascinating conversation. We were talking about the worker shortage, and virtually in every industry, they're struggling finding work, and we were saying that the, the extra unemployment had expired, and, and uh, um, you know, maybe some people are still uh, doing that, but I, I imagine there's going to be a massive job look coming up soon. Do you think that's going to happen, Harold? You know, um, you know, after November, or December. I have to remain optimistic. I, yeah. I have to think that, uh, that that people will will come out and, and look for the jobs that are indeed available. Well, I, I as I mentioned uh, earlier, I have a, a foundation, the, the Dale Caldwell Foundation. It's really focused on reducing poverty by. Um, by getting people gainfully employed, and we kind of do trauma-informed job training to make sure there's a work ethic. You know, we should, we should really talk about that because there are people that want a job, and so this is a great opportunity for people who have not had a chance to get a job to get a job. And I don't know that there are enough programs really looking at, uh, looking at, at, at trying to help people, um, you know, find those jobs because uh, it's amazing how many jobs there are now. It really, it, it really is. So. So as you look at your, your store workers and, and uh, um, 500 employees, what, what, what do you see in the future? What are going to be some of your future, uh, future needs? And, and are, you, are you looking to go into any new, new areas, new industries? I, I think we have a lot of opportunity to um, you know, sell prepared foods. And I, I think what our business looks like today might not look like what it is. Right. Uh, what it will look like tomorrow. So I, I definitely entertain um, new ideas in terms of we have we, we own 30 brick and mortar stores mm -hmm. and, and we could basically sell whatever we want out of them. I mean, we have our identity and in, in what we sell now, but I think the opportunity moving forward will be endless. I, I do look at our current work pool and, and say, all right, what skills and knowledge do we need to give them uh, to, to take us to where we want to be in, in the future? Well, one of the one of the things I, a, a, a classmate of mine um, was was talking about branding and, and really uh, really was saying that the successful brands don't focus on the brand as much as they focus on their agenda or their mission. You know that their mission you know their mission really drives the brand. And so so what would you say your mission or is there a mission statement that you have for Heritage? Uh, what what is your mission? So, so I'll, I'll start with our vision. Our, our yeah. vision is that Heritages will be known as a leader in excellent guest service, uh, you know, by exceeding their expectations. Mm -hmm. And th I think that all, uh, to your point, that all starts with what our values are right. here at right. Heritages. And, and my grandpa, our number one value is that people are the most important part of our business. And that, that goes and cuts two ways, that when we look at our, our workers, our employees here, that when we view that they are the most important part of our business, and even for me as the, the president and CEO, how can I serve my employees in the best capacity, give them the tools, the training that they need to do the job we need them to do, that, that that'll pay dividends. And when we look at the our guests, we call them guests, when we look at them, 
across the counter that, that we're there to serve them and, and to deliver a, a value, a, a comfortable, friendly environment, offering quality products, um, you know, with, with a friendly smile. We, we believe that that adds value and, and that really goes to who we are as a brand. Wonderful. And, and so do you do kind of customer service training for your employees or uh, is, there a, is there a way, is there a heritage way of doing we do. We have uh, we have what what we call magic class, and we we kind of we class. stole it from Disney. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's I love an it. acronym. It's making a great impression on our customers, even though we change it to guest. And uh -huh. so every new employee will come through magic class that will learn our history, and then they will learn the guest service standards that we have from you know waiting on a customer, taking deli orders, um, and, and all of the likes. And how long have you been doing that? How long have you had magic? I love the name, Magic Class. How long have you had that? Man, as long as I've been around. I, I, it's probably been 25 years wow, that we've had wow, a, really? a formal magic class, so to speak. But, but, but Harold, see, and this is what people, when I'm, I'm consulting to a lot of businesses, they don't understand how important that is. I'll guarantee that that training has, has really helped to, to build your brand and grow your, your business. And it amazes me how many companies don't do that. And you can walk into a place and know immediately whether they folks have been trained or not. Yeah, that's, I mean, we're, we are struggling with it now. We have a ton of new employees, even though we're, we're shorthanded. But when you can and do have the time and the, the people that, that can go through that training and we can execute our standards, I mean, it, it pays immense dividends and our customers around here in South Jersey like they, they just recognize like hey your employees are really friendly they engage us um, it's not, I don't want to say cheers so to speak but it, it really is like right, you can go right. to any one given store and you know Farmer Joe uh -huh. you know Mary that comes in for a tuna sandwich and, and that's um, that's the atmosphere that we've cultivated in many of our stores in, in the communities where our employees know that the customers and our customers know and appreciate um, our employees. But who was it? Cliff, the postal worker. Who was the, the you know the, the, the and again and that's but the, see that's so, and we lose that. We're you know and, and again this is one of the things I I really think that people get too hung up on this conservative liberal and Democrat Republican and 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 you know and 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 this whole conflict which I hate the conflict because we're one country we're a great country but it's really kind of big versus small is the real delineation. And then what's happening is we're going to have one bank and one insurance company and one auto dealer and one, you know, and, and so we've got to get back to supporting the local family business, which is why I do this show, which is why everywhere I go, I say, support your local family business. And so, uh, you know, as you've seen it over the years, you know, it's, it's really, um, it, 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 people don't seem to understand how important that local, that local business is to, to their welfare. I couldn't agree more, um, Dr. Caldwell. I and I, I think we're fortunate that the the residents here in Southern New Jersey, you know, identified you know the value that we offer, who we are as a company, and right. I don't want to say it's a cultish following, but we have a, a very loyal customer base that has enabled us to stay in business through you know the economic downturn in the mid 2000s, 2007, eight was we almost went out of business then, and then. You know, through through this pandemic, has been very difficult, and and they found us, and I hope that they feel the same way. I appreciate them, and I feel like we served our our community in a, in a big way in an uncertain time. Um, so so, so know, they could have shopped anywhere, really, yeah. uh, but but they chose to shop Heritage's. Well, and and, and I, I think people often forget. You know, as much as people are supporters of the Phillies or the Yankees or the Red Sox or you know, they want to support a local business, the business they'll go, and they'll pay a little more to go to their business because it feels like they own it. It feels like it's very personal. And we're losing a lot of that because of just the, the coldness of a lot of these big businesses. So I'm, I'm loving what I'm hearing about, about that. So, so yeah. Yeah, talk to me about, uh, you know, I, I want to hear about the, the 2008 challenges and the pandemic challenges. What, what, what were some of the challenges? Was it just that people didn't have money, they didn't shop, or what, what happened in, uh, in 2008? Yeah, overall it was, uh, you know, it, our, our, our gross margins were low and, um, you know, the business we weren't doing well, like, with, in revenue, and, and we actually had to lay off people in two, late 2007 going into eight with the, you know, it was like that, the, the housing crisis, right, the market, right. and all of those things. So it was, 
they were a tough few years and we, we really didn't rebound from mm-hmm. that until I'd say 2013, 2014. Wow. wow. Um, so that was, you know, just in talking to my dad, I, I was out working in the stores, but that, that was a very stressful time right. to lead a family business. And, and, and finally, in the pandemic, we're almost out of time, but the pandemic, how were you able to survive? What, um, you know, the challenges, did people not spend as much, did you find, or what? So it was really interesting, and we've always viewed ourselves as, as your, your community store, mm-hmm. right? I, I had expressed that we had, um, you know, we sell groceries and the likes, and it, by April, our customer counts had dropped almost by 30%. Wow, wow. Um, but, but what we recognized was, and our business changed in, in how and when people shop. So people weren't commuting to work. Mm-hmm. People weren't coming home from work. People weren't going to sporting events and right. kids' little leagues and things like that. So, you know, some sales dropped off, but in, in, in hindsight, they, they shopped us, you know, for our deli, for our grocery items, and people... The people that did shop our stores spent more money mm. um, and bought a wide variety of products that we had continued to offer. Right, right. The um, well, well, Harold. You know, unfortunately, as I said, this goes very, very quickly. Um, congratulations on this amazing business. I'm, I'm looking forward to. I haven't had a chance to go because I'm in Central Jersey, but I'm looking forward to getting to uh, to one of your stores and being a regular customer. So uh, thank you so very, very much. I'd like to thank the audience for Family Business World. We will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.